on your committee. Thank you, Gregor. <laughs> and um, first of all, before starting, I would like to ask everyone to make sure cameras are off and microphone, microphones are muted to make sure that we can hear uh, Professor Sarkisian very clearly. And uh, of course, if you are going, if you have questions and questions are very welcomed, you can type the questions in the messenger and uh, then we will have a chance to discuss all these questions. So as Mr. Sarkisian has suggested, we are going to have more kind of discussion, so just lecture. And uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions to discuss. So, and uh, I want to welcome our professor, Grigor Sarkisian, who is a professor of mathematics at Rutgers University and visiting scholar at the University of Mathematics of the uh, Polish Academy of Sciences. Today, Professor will share with uh, his thoughts and ideas about uh, Armenia and the diaspora, very important to topic, and how to build a strategic connection. Um, we are impatient to listen to Professor and to uh, understand how we are going to build this bridge, this important bridge. And uh, I would like to tell a short bio about the Professor. He was born in 1980 uh, in Yerevan, Armenia. He went to school number 24 and then Imostasar College. From 1997 to 1999, he was a student at Yerevan State University, Department of Mathematics, and uh, immigrated to United States in 1999. Professor Sarkisian has a bachelor's degree from the U City University of New York in 2003. PhD from UC Berkeley, 2009. National Science Foundation postdoc at UCLA 2000, from 2009 to 2011. He is recipient of NSF Career Award, Artin Prize, Sachs Prize, and Clay Lift of Fellow. So, and about today's topic, uh, Professor Sarkisian will discuss the various ways in which Armenians from Armenia and the diaspora can cooperate. There's we will discuss scientific cooperation, particularly how we can use um, diaspora scientists to foster scientific education in Armenia. The professor will discuss, and uh, then the professor will discuss the possibility of uniting diaspora Armenians around Armenia. Though the Armenian diaspora is extremely strong, it does not have an institutionalized direction or a cohesive idea around which it is unified. So moreover, Professor Sarkisian will address the importance of pure sciences, he will examine the differences between pure science and applied science, how pure science contributes to society and why most developed societies tend to invest in pure sciences. So this is short topic uh, and uh, a little bit more detailed what we are going to discuss today. So floor is yours, Professor. We are happy to. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thanks for, thanks for the, uh, letting me speak. Uh, I guess it all happened because I decided one day that I, I, that I have to write an article for Armenian Weekly and then uh, Narek contacted me and asked me to do this. So, so I, and I'm really happy to do it. Uh, but uh, when I was thinking about what to say, I uh, decided that it doesn't make sense to have a, a prepare a lecture, but rather just have a conversation. And so I, I want to say global things and sort of uh, just some ideas and then Hopefully there will be a discussion. Uh, and the, the main thing is, uh, I don't know how many of you have been outside Armenia, there, there are really two Armenias. One is the one where you live in, and the other one is the one where everybody else, which is much bigger, yeah? It's way more people live outside than inside, unfortunately. And uh, uh, for you, Armenia is a real thing. For us, it's not. It's, it's just, it's, it's an idea. We don't really, uh, that it's a country which is somewhere else. Our lives are in another place. And uh, uh, in many ways, it feels like living, uh, that the home is somewhere else, yeah, when you live outside. Um, and so I think it's important that, especially after the, the events that have just happened, I think it's important to think about how to unite the two because the while there are only two point something million people living there, there's more than 10 million people living outside. Uh, and so there's, there's a huge potential outside. Uh, the, uh, the, the, one of the things that a few, few weeks ago, there was a discussion in the parliament about science and science was presented as a 
uh, security, I forgot the title, the sciences of security of the country or something like that. And then there was an interview, sort of discussion on public TV with a few people. And I remember listening to them and they constantly, uh, people the, the, who were invited, they were constantly saying, we don't have this, we don't have this, we don't have this, we don't have this, and I'm listening and, and I'm thinking, no, we have that, we have that, we have that, we have that, but it's just not in Armenia. Uh, so the, the, the thing is, uh, it will be, now we don't have the answers. I don't know how we're gonna bring all of that to Armenia, but it's important to, that people start talking about it. Uh, so one thing I wanna say is that the, the uh, Armenians outside Armenia dominate many aspects of life uh, in the, the countries where they live. For example, in Hollywood, there are many Armenians. I don't know if you know that there's a, Recent, a recent movie about Komitas that just came out, which was a big budget movie. Um, the tech industry, which um, uh, like uh, my feeling was that the people in, on that uh, public TV discussion were not aware that <laughs> the tech industry in America is full of Armenians, the banking industry, academia, especially mathematics. Uh, I know about 25, 30 people uh, of, Armenians from Armenia and Armenians from diaspora uh, who have sort of, you know, uh, elite positions in Western universities. And so, uh, you know, if you just put all of them together, you can create an elite mathematics department, for example. In fact, two. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's a huge potential outside. And the, the, the key point is that this Armenia, the, the second Armenia is just hanging there. It's no it's not, it doesn't exist. Uh, I, I always hear President Aliyev say that uh, our enemy is diaspora, but it doesn't exist. It's not an actual thing. It doesn't have an army. It doesn't have laws. You know, there's no, <laughs> we don't pay tax. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's, there's no structure there. There, there are uh, uh, groups that are like, for example, AGBU, there is ANCA, there are a few other organizations, but there is no, uh, country basically and uh, another thing about this diaspora is that if you look from outside uh, and then you zoom in into what's happening in, in the country it feels like they're just pulling Armenia in different directions the Russian diaspora is probably at the moment probably the largest I'm, I'm, I don't know the numbers I think they have 2.5 million which is probably the largest one but then we have the Western diaspora you know people leaving their countries and they think the way the country is. They grow up according to those values. And obviously the Eastern values are different than the Western values. And they come to Armenia and they start spreading their ideas. And there has to be communication between these two. Uh, and I think uh, the way to build that communication is to come up with one particular, sort of come up with uh, problems that both sides would like to solve. And one is education, yeah? Uh, so it could be used to bring uh, both sides together and the both sides are interested. There are uh, Armenians from Russian diaspora who have made big investments in Armenian education, like the, um, I think the school in Dilijan, for example, I think it's sponsored by, the, by Russians, AUA, that's Western. Uh, and, and so education is, is a place where two can meet. And so I, we, me and my math colleagues recently started discussing about the, the, the math, especially in particular mathematics education in Armenia. And the thing I hear all the time is that Armenian students are no longer the old um, uh, idealistic students. They're more pragmatists. Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is true, but the feeling I get that Armenians are now the students uh, uh, peak the profession, the most profitable profession, rather than just want to go and study uh, sort of philosophy or science, like the way my generation was. Yeah. Um, well, th th that's a, everywhere that happens, but uh, I think we should we should think a little bit about that. Um, the reason the, the the reason that approach is is not good is because the uh, it, let me make sure that I'm not running ahead of myself. Uh, if, you, if you only want to learn the thing that gives you money, you, 
you will not train yourself in ways that uh, uh, might make you better at what you do. Yeah, so for example, if you think of the point of, from athlete's point of view, if uh, let's say football player, they only need to kick the ball, but if they don't go to the gym and become stronger, <laughs> they will not be as good as at uh, kicking the ball. Yeah, so the, there are always other things that you need to do in order to uh, be better at what you actually do. And so if you only learn the thing that keep, brings money, brings security and etc., you just will never be good at it. Uh, as good as somebody else who has also invested in other things. Like for example, people ask me often, why should I read Tolstoy? Well, uh, there's no reason, but if say you are a politician and you're going to trips, then we might strike better conversation with somebody important. And uh, things like that, yeah? So you, it, this sort of other things that you do, they, uh, will help you in other ways. Not, may, maybe not exactly in, the, in your profession, but they help you other ways. And in the tech, especially in the tech fields, yeah? In the tech fields, uh, let's see how uh, American education is uh, structured, the one that I actually know. Uh, we have, let's say, giant mathematics departments, say 40, 50 students enter each year for two PhD program, and then only few graduate. Only few actually end up, uh, uh, most graduate, but only few actually end up in academia. Most of those people end up in uh, uh, tech companies or financial companies and places like that. And, and, uh, and the, the industry values them. You know, the industry wants them. Um, and the reason is that these people, besides knowing how to program or besides knowing the actual knowledge, they're able to think technically. They know they're trained in uh, approaching the problem a certain way, and uh, they're not afraid to tackle, for example, difficult questions, as opposed to somebody who just went through a four-year education and only knows that stuff. And I've never had a chance to actually train in thinking, yeah, trained with working with abstract concepts. And so, and so I th that, that's really valued in, in, the, in the Western society. So they invest in, in these PhD programs in mathematics, in physics, in chemistry, and they don't think of it as a waste because then these people go and work in industry and return, you know, make much more than, than it was invested into producing that. And so, and so I think just thinking this way, thinking that uh, let's only teach the thing that people need to get jobs, yeah, you can create an economy like that, but I don't think that will be a leading economy. So if you, if Armenia wants to become a, a sort of a center, tech center, uh, I don't, I don't, at least this is my opinion, we have to also have PhD programs and, and serious ones. So, okay, so I'm not going too fast. Oh, uh, people can say, but if you teach them stuff, then uh, let's say someone finishes a, a, a four year education in computer science and then goes, gets a job. And then you can say, well, they learn how to think in, at, at their jobs, but they won't learn. <laughs> you know, these jobs are much easier than what they do in their PhD thesis. Yeah, so they will never be as sophisticated thinkers as they would have been if they went through say PhD program at some prestigious place. So, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that there are people who finish Harvard, they get PhD from Harvard, and they end up in industry. So in America, this is viewed as a good thing. It's not viewed as, oh my God, he just wasted his life, spent five years in, uh, <laughs> in a PhD program in Harvard, all that thinking and et cetera, and et cetera, and then at the end, he ended up in industry. Yes, he did, or she did, but they, but the industry values this. So go look at CEOs, for, for example, in major banks or startups and et cetera. You'll see a lot of people will have PhDs in, from big places. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and so I, I, I think the, the, you know, the thing that it gives you this, doing PhD in a technical field, you're just able to think with abstract concepts uh, uh, in, in a more easy, it's, it's an entire culture, yeah? So 
a PhD learns how to think with abstract con uh, about abstract concepts rather than just do concrete things. And, and that mentality is helpful in, 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 in tech news. Uh, okay. And so from what I'm hearing from my colleagues, it seems that our Armenian universities, uh, yeah, okay, let me, uh, Uh, yeah, so I think our many universities are keep keep still doing uh, st still do what they were doing when I was there, and when I was there, uh, with all due respect to AA, I don't really know when you guys. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this: when uh, when I uh, finished school, uh, high school in Armenia, AUA was the cool place to go. So it, it was no one was really sure what it would be. Um, and uh, most people didn't think of it as a destination, yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, but I am extremely uh, surprised and also pleased that AUA made all, I mean, I, I am really, it's really impressive, yeah. That it started from this small thing that it was and now it's this big thing, so it's, it's, it's quite impressive. Uh, but, uh, but the, the way it was taught to me, and I think it's still being taught that way, at least according to my uh, colleagues, is uh, the professor wouldn't, would never, uh, would, would teach you the, the material rather than tell you what the big ideas were, why, uh, why people care, right? So for example, this is an important, important thing. Uh, uh, in math, for example, you take, I don't know how many mathematicians there are in the audience, but for example, you take calculus and there's the concept of real number. And I remember in the first day of university, they would teach you, uh, this is the real number and there will be a definition. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's, there was a reason for someone to think about that and that reason was not given. And this is, this is the, the thing that's, that was missing from Armenian education at, at that time. And I think it's still like that. People were just copying what was in the book on the board some were doing it really well, others were not doing it so well. Uh, and so people need to sort of, there has to be like a major rethinking of the whole process, yeah? And from what I'm hearing, the, the problem seemed to start from the elementary schools. That there was a recent change and it became 12 year education instead of uh, 10, which, which, which is what it was when I was there. Uh, the, the reason 12 year, 12 years is bad, and I can see that in America, yes? The, these two extra years, the uh, people end up learning what colleges were giving before. So that stuff goes down to schools. Schools don't do a good job of teaching that because it's teachers uh, maybe are not ready to teach that. Yeah, it's a little, it's, it's more extra work for them. And, uh, and then when they go to college, College starts <laughs> reteaching them exactly that, uh, and so th there's a disconnect. Yeah, there's the, the schools, uh, colleges expect that the, the, the students know that stuff from schools. Schools don't do a good job. They go to college. Colleges try to um, uh, teach that stuff again, and it, it just gets a, it, it becomes messy. Uh, so I, I don't think twelve years is a good idea. That, that doesn't does not work in America. In America, we have uh, it's actually a really big problem. Students come. Uh, uh, you, you can immediately see that these two years that the last two years that, uh, that the schools just basically didn't do what they were supposed to do, and, <laughs> and you just basically start over. Uh, and and often you run into problems because in America people pay for their education. I guess AUA is also private. And so they nice there are all kinds of problems, like why am I paying for something I already know? Then you have to convince them that they don't know it, and etc. So it's all a mess. Uh, I don't think to is a good uh, twelve years is a good idea. But another thing which existed in my time and I think still exists is this math Olympiadas. This is specifically about math. Um, you know, people should not think of this so it's okay to pursue something just because you're interested. And in Armenian education at the time when I was growing up, and I think still it's like that, the, for example, mathematics was, if you were good at math, then you had to do math Olympiadas, which is an extremely pragmatic approach to mathematics. The least pragmatic subject on earth, maybe philosophy is 
<laughs> you know, one level below math, but math is extremely abstract, yes? And, and they were trying to teach it through Olympiadas. So you have, you have to win, you have to learn to win, to compete in a set, but that's not what mathematicians do. We don't compete, we don't, and scientists don't compete. They play with ideas, they try to understand how certain phenomena works and things like that. We don't compete. Uh, and so I think, I think that people should concentrate on that. I'm sorry, Gokor. Yes? <laughs> Things have changed a little bit. Okay. I think for okay. now, we have a lot of uh, like different programs in schools and in universities also. And uh, it's kind of more, uh, it, it became more scientific than as a, like, um, as you, as you say it, like, it's like a fight who is going to win the first place, etc. But you are right, there are still some uh, things to, to be changed. And uh, it will be interesting also to listen uh, your opinion, how the diaspora can have influence on these changes. To, yes. Because yeah. we, have, uh, we need to change mindset, yes? To be able to do all these things. So how you see well, that? Just... Uh... <laughs> now this is the hard part, yes. So the the the, the, as, the way diaspora can come in. Yes, usually we have we everyone knows the problems. Yes, yes. So the, 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 I you know the diaspora. Uh, there are ways to. It, it all begins with Armenia, yes. So what I wanted to say, the reason of that line of thought was going to go into saying that uh, we actually have people who know this stuff. Right, so there are people who know math, there are people who know physics, there are people who know chemistry, there are people who, know, who have tech companies, there are people who know industry. There, there was in that interview, there was this discussion that we don't have people who can take the ideas from academia and turn into, uh, bring it to industry. We have all of these people, all of them exist in, 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 uh, in the West. I, I mean, I can even give you names, they all exist. And so one, one thing, it, it all depends on our me. I mean, do you want them to come? <laughs> and, you know, they, they're not going to by themselves come. People don't know how to do this. Yeah, so it has to be, uh, there has to be initiation from Armenian side, I believe. And so people have to sit and think, uh, how can I go to this particular person and ask them to come and uh, do something? So as far as education goes, we in the math community are thinking about having online classes. So, I mean, it's really difficult because the problem begins, so as far as math goes, yes, uh, the problem begins in schools. The, uh, the professors say, the professors that we've been talking say, uh, students finish school, they want to pick something that gives them a profession, they go math department, they get disappointed because they don't understand why they're learning all of that stuff. So the, the connection is between, the, the problem begins at school and uh, university doesn't do such a good job at, uh, changing that. And so one thing we are thinking is uh, organizing some trips to schools, like go and show them that, you know, we have, uh, that, you know, math is actually a career or physics is a career. That's, that's what scientists do present uh, our, our point, point of views. Another thing is that we have been thinking about, this is a problematic thing. Uh, we're thinking about how we could teach at YSU, for example, um, on do online classes. Uh, so, I mean, as you can see, I mean, all of these suggestions are problematic because there are people who are, would be against uh, such change because, you know, you're taking somebody's child. Yeah. I'm sorry, we have a very interesting question just uh, uh -huh. on, this, uh, on this topic. In your opinion, what would be the incentive for the PhDs to come to Armenia and to support research and the industry. So they also promote <laughs> the <laughs> uh, uh, It's, uh, you know, I lived outside of Armenia 20 years. It's my dream to come back. And most of us are like that. We want to come. We just don't have a way to come. It's, you know, the thing is, when you live outside, yes, you, you live outside, your life is outside. Your life, your friends are outside, your wife is outside, your kids are outside, your parents are outside. I don't know, your uncle is outside. <laughs> All of these things, Armenia becomes an abstract idea. So people cannot, 
so yeah, so what you need to do is you need to, but, but the love of the country will bring everybody back. There is, there is an emptiness in uh, every person I talk to has, uh, has some kind of feeling of loss. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that is, is the reason why people will come back, not, not money. I don't think anybody will come back because of money. Yeah. Just uh, if we look at your example, for example, what will uh, be more is, uh, make more incentive for you to come back? Like if there will be some governmental program or uh, there will be some organization like AWA or other um, East oh. universities that will like make some programs which will motivate or make some incentives for you to come, which will be more compatible for you. Uh, it's hard. And for me, it's harder. Yes, my wife is Polish, for example. So that, I mean, it's, it creates all, all kinds of other problems. Uh, that I don't think you should think about bringing us back. You should think about bringing a lot, using us to make sure that the next generation doesn't leave. Uh, so, the, and the way to use us is to create all of this university. Like for example, create, uh, AUA does not have mathematics program. Yes, create a mathematics program, create physics program, create, I don't know, chemistry program, and let these diaspora Armenians come and teach those things at AUA or at YSU, and so that the next generation doesn't leave. Yeah? Uh, I mean, uh, by saying yeah. coming back, I didn't mean to Ah, come. you meant, oh, so, well, if there was, if somebody allowed me to uh, just connect with students, mm -hmm. I would happily do that, yeah. If I, there was a platform, there is no platform. And, and, and it's kind of shocking that there is no platform, but there is really no serious way of actually connecting with uh, uh, with the entire chain from high school to college to PhD, that chain does not exist. And if there was that platform, people like me would uh, be involved in the, uh, in, a, in, in with Armenia. So what we are discussing now in, in uh, diaspora is how we could, what, what we could offer to Armenia and that they would create such a platform. Yeah. I mean, but it's very difficult because we don't know, what what's possible we don't know what <laughs> what, what people want yeah uh, uh. just a question again uh, concerning this matter uh, do you, uh, is there any network professional network for example mathematicians who are uh, gathering together some time by time and discussing some things it, uh, do we have no such uh, networks or not actually, oh. not yet. No. Because this, I think we have to start from these little groups to make uh, it happen. The, the, it so, I, I, yeah, we, of course, we're thinking about it. It's really hard to know what to do with them. So, let's say you have a, a Armenian, there's an Armenian math, math, mathematicians union. So, uh, you know, I'm talking about math because I know it, but this is true about everything. Uh, it, it's not really functioning because it's not clear what, what it could do. Mm -hmm. There's a, we should not turn Armenia into a touristic destination. It shouldn't be something that I, oh, I let me go spend one month in Armenia, relax and go back. This is not what I want and this is not what other mathematicians and other scientists want. We want real connection. We want to come teach the next generation, make sure that the next generation stays in Armenia, does not go and end up in foreign lands. This is what, what the dream is. And unions like that, they, they dissolve, you know, they don't have that the time, the, uh, for, for some reason in America it works, but, uh, but, but in America I don't, it works because the other structures are there, you know, the universities are there, people teach, they don't feel uh, that the, the connection has to be there, the, 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 the fact that, that I, I can access to uh, smart Armenian kids, right, if we all feel that we are connected with the Armenian, the, the, the next generation, everybody will, will like to be involved. Because the dream of all scientists is to have students. Yeah, they want to have community. They want, and that's what's missing. That platform is missing. I'm sorry, we have a very interesting question from Vagon Kushan. Uh -huh. Do you think how may, how may we shift the paradigm from doing something for Armenia to doing something for yourself? Doing something for okay, uh, from 
from doing something for Armenia to doing something for yourself to change the paradigm? Uh, I mean, doing something for Armenia is doing something for myself, yeah. <laughs> the, you know, the problem the diaspora has, or people like me have, especially people like me because I was born there, is that we feel we lost something, yeah? There was that entire life that we lived there, and then one day it ended, and then the new life began. It's that, uh, and then we keep thinking about that life that was in the first half. And so I think most of us want to reconnect. Most of us want to come, and whatever we learned in the West, want to give back to the country. That's really, I, I don't, you know, our salaries are pretty high. We have really good lives. I don't think money is the reason that will bring us back. I don't, uh, I don't think that sort of structures, uh, it's, it, it will be, uh, think of Soviet Union, yeah? There was nothing in Armenia when Soviet Union began. What did they do? They went to Marty Rosayan and said, hey, come to Armenia and, and do your art in Armenia. They went to Spendarian, they, they said the same thing. Uh, they went to the scientists and said the same thing. There's people, when you, when you go and tell them, look, you can do something for your country, uh, it, it, you know, the other things disappear. It's <laughs> we, have a, we have also an interesting suggestion from Shari Kamilian. Mm -hmm. Just as a suggestion, conducting a joint research programs which would be beneficial for development of Armenia among European or USA universities and AUA. So. Uh, so, so again, I mean, all of this comes down to we're thinking about this stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, there's no platform. The uh, the, the uh, you know, like let's say we're talking about theoretical sciences. The tech industry is a little bit better. So I, all I wanted to say at the beginning of the speech, I wanted to make sure that I can try to convince you that it is important to invest in theoretical sciences. And I th the reason that's important is because that allows you to build better industry. Uh, as far as me uh, creating uh, research connections. Yes, there are programs like that, but no one, there is, for example, one of my colleagues, uh, Armen Chiraken, he's a professor in France. He had a, a master's program. And just to, if you think about it, the amount of work that went into this, it's a titanic amount of work. He was able to create online master's program. Uh, that was, the degree was coming from France. So the degree, you would get if you went through this master's program, your degree would come from France. And there was no Armenian student who uh, applied for this. I mean, there were three, but none of them qualified. Uh, it's, you have to start from the, from the bottom if you want to solve. There has to be a connection between uh, the Armenian diaspora mathematicians and schools. So there has to be, that link has to be established. I think uh, the... You just answered the question of Narek. Where do you begin to build this uh, institutionalized direction between Armenia and the diaspora? As far as education goes, uh, we have to go to schools. If you guys like AUA, YSU and other organizations can think of ways of connecting us to the schools. Yeah, because that's where the problem is. The problem is that uh, Armenian students, uh, you know, there's there are many gifted ones. There's too many, too much talent in Armenia, but they go into, they pursue careers like programmers and other things, these kind of pragmatic things. Uh, if, and, and, but that doesn't let you build this kind of sophisticated uh, industry that you, uh, Armenia needs, in, in my opinion. And, and, and the way to do it is to connect the diaspora uh, scientists, mathematicians, physicists, I don't know, philosophers, chemists, and others. With, uh, with school. We can teach online classes. We, I mean, uh, the, now we are teaching online everywhere. <laughs> so why can't we do that in, uh, I mean, there are lots of problems. You know, don't, don't think that this is like, we, we just do it like this and it works. No, because the one problem is we have jobs, right? Um, my situation, my particular situation is a little bit easier, but my colleagues, they have jobs where they have to teach in their universities. And so, the university where they teach will not want them to teach also in Armenia. Yeah, so there's, there's serious problems to think about. But the, the question is whether 
people want the uh, whether people want this yeah if if people agree with the idea that this is that we are doing this that we are connecting the, Ar Amer the uh, armenian diaspora the scientists with the next generation right if then the other problems will be solved the other problems are uh, just just they're, they're just problems. One has to sit down, think about what, how exactly to solve those problems and solve them. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. If we go back to your um, previous statement about the diaspora, differences in diaspora, Russia and like Western diaspora, Russian diaspora, um, you are correct, really. Uh, they are, it, it's kind of, they are fully, um, uh, pulling army in different directions and uh, it's kind of um, they are more interrupting but then uh, helping to do something no. to connect uh, or to something so how do you see the solution here because no, need talk. people need to to talk so uh, i mean i i mostly think about education because i care about it but that's one way yeah uh, bring people uh, I don't know anyone in Russia for some reason, but uh, if we were doing this education thing, there would be some link between the Russian sci Armenian scientists and the Western Armenian scientists, so there will be some conversation there. There has to be uh, uh, conferences. You, Armenia has to do. There's a lot of things that Armenia has to do. Uh, I, and it's kind of puzzling why no one is doing this, actually. I don't really know. Maybe people are actually doing it. Uh, why not? form a committee of 10 people and sit down and think about these problems. Uh, one way to do it will be a conference a com uh, and say a few people from Russian representatives of Russian diaspora and say French and Americans can come and you know there will be talks and things like that and we interact and they will discuss things. The, you know, they all want the same thing, yes? the core of what they want is the same. They all want Armenia to be strong and prosperous country. And, and then they diverge. <laughs> They're like, oh no, we have to go to Russia. Oh no, we have to go to America. Oh no, we have to go to France and things like that. But the, uh, but the core is the same. And so if you make them talk, they will come to some kind of consensus. Thank you. We had an interesting question about what criteria from Sarkis Gnazian. What criteria should be applied by Armenian government to select and develop those scientific fields that have long-term importance for Armenia in terms of economic development, security, healthcare, etc. And as um, to keep uh, like to be in time, also we have a suggestion that people are interested to hear more about how pure science is contributed to society and why most developed societies tend to invest in pure sciences. So I think I think I already yeah okay let me answer the uh, you know if you're gonna sit there and decide which sign which who to give money and who to not give money when you're developing science it's not gonna work you have to have a global approach because science is not uh, one five it, it it has booms just like economy has booms suddenly tech industry booms and and then there is a bubble it collapses and another thing booms it, it it's like that science you know. One year, one five year period, there might be some boom in, I don't know, biology, and then another boom in mathematics, or like data science, for example, is a huge boom in mathematics right now. Uh, 10 years later, who knows what will happen? If you're investing in science, you cannot just pick. You have to invest in all. You have to let scientists do their thing. It just doesn't work uh, that I'm going to give money to chemists. It doesn't work like that. You have, you have to give support all of them. Of course, there are uh, some that like data science, applied fields, uh, which are that the the profit comes faster. Maybe those need to get more money, of course, than say more theoretical ones. But it has to be full scale. You, you cannot say, "Oh, I'm only doing data science," which is what, uh, with all due respect, our many universities tend to do now. Uh, that doesn't work like that because five years later it may not be data science five years later it may be something else so i think if you're strategizing it has to be all and with the, and then you have to get into the details of exactly how much each discipline gets and that's a t t difficult question uh oh the 
they, they, I already said why people invest in uh, technical sciences. It's because, you know, uh, let's see, one of my friends is the CEO that did PhD with me, is the CEO of uh, the, the, the Chase Bank, uh, the, the finance branch of the Chase Bank, I forget the name. Another one is, uh, uh, I mean, by CEO, by CEO, Facebook, and etc. They, it's because these people have different set of skills than than people who go into ordinary four-year universities. They're able to think uh, about technical subjects, te technical questions, um, unlike the other ones. The other ones are not. Uh, I mean, I can see this from, with my students. Yes, the the PhD students that I have can think more sophisticated. So, uh, and more abstractly, and I'm sure that most of them are going to go to industry. Like, for example, one of them is going to go to work for NASA. And uh, uh, but the other ones, the, the ones who just finish Rutgers four-year program, they will have no chance of getting into NASA because they're not bringing that sort of uh, uh, thinking into. Uh, they're not just not able to do it, uh, and that's why. <laughs> it's there's a strong connection you know it's, there's a reason why silicon valley is where it is i don't know if you looked at the map there's stanford on one side and uc berkeley on the other side and they're both the biggest uh, you know two of the biggest universities in america they keep feeding the industry many people who go to uh, berkeley the phd programs in berkeley or stanford many of my friends they end up one guy I had an op my my office mate ended up in Pixar, for example, and and they valued, you know, they go up really fast. Uh, they don't go to the starting jobs. They go really fast because these companies need these kind of thinkers. The uh, in that interview, Crisp, uh, the the founder of Crisp, uh, was discussing this issue: how you bring that he needed PhDs in physics to to start his uh, his company. And uh, uh, that's a good example. Yeah, if you need people who are going to solve this kind of technical problems, not just write a code, then, then you need people who are trained in thinking with this, in, in this sort of environment, that solving these kind of problems. And what is, there's no better place to do it than the PhD programs, yeah? The, 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 the ordinary education programs can only give knowledge. You can only teach stuff. And then you can create little exercises but it's only PhD programs that give someone a chance to really concentrate on, on some problem, think about that problem, solve that problem, and, uh, and then the industries value that. It is a really big issue for Armenia, the PhD program, because for uh, my example is the same. I have done masters and I haven't done PhD because I don't want to do it for like a paper. But I, I just want to do something related to my job, concentrate on some topic, but not become scientist. I just want to concentrate on something, to make something and then use in my field. But unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, now I, did, I didn't. Ha I don't have any chance to do it. So, you know. so that that's one. You know, the, this pragmatic view. The if you pursue science for because it's going to bring help you in some way in your, in your work, it's most likely not going to help you. Yeah? Uh, if you go to math PhD program, whatever you learn there, most likely you're not going to use exactly that in your work. What you will use is the culture. Just like when a football player goes to gym and makes big muscles, uh, you know, the, 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 at the end of the day, he needs the kicking, not so much, but the muscles help him to be full uh, professional. Yeah. Uh, I would like to also ask one question concerning taxes, as I am interested in. <laughs> in your statement, you have uh, mentioned that also in, in the article you have write, written for Armenian Weekly, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that the, um, monetary contributions should take the form of tax instead of donations to some general fund. So, what do you mean by saying that and how you imagine it? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, there is a that, that, that's about a bigger problem. Yeah. So the the, the way diaspora is integrated into American into Armenian life is that they want to help. They all want to somehow help, 
they don't know how and then there are these bonds the telecoms i don't know if you know this uh, there are days when they the tv runs an entire program where they, you can call and donate money so there are lots of things like this uh, and then people just give and then go and do whatever they were doing before uh, but that's not what people want. People want to participate in, uh, in, in the entire Armenian life. Yeah, they want to be part of Armenia. They don't want to just <laughs> give money. To, uh, and, and this is just uh, a lot of people in diaspora are now saying, we need to be part of Armenia, we need to be part of Armenia. And that's one way of doing it. Now, it's, uh, it's not going to be that tomorrow we start paying tax to Armenia, right? Uh, it has to, there has, something has to change. You have to first of all make some investment, and then, based on this investment, to pay taxes. Well, uh, well America has laws where, uh, like, if you want to maintain your citizenship, you have to pay tax if, if you live outside. So I'm, I'm sure you, laws can be made. Uh, uh, so, so you know, we all have to become Armenian citizens. One, uh, but but I think the the main reason why this will fail. <laughs> is that Armenia would never allow uh, people from diaspora to have representation in the parliament. That, that it will come down to that, right? There will be, uh, there has to be representation in the parliament uh, and only then Armenians will trust, uh, Armenians will start giving tax. There's no representation if the law is not changed. No, in other words, what I'm trying to say is not that this is, I wrote that, but it, there is a lot more there. Yeah, the, the law has to change. Armenians have to start being represented in the parliament. Uh, and like the, the whole thing has to change. Uh, the, the entire thing, how Armenians, uh, diaspora Armenians are connected to Armenia, that has to change for this to happen. Uh, Thank you. And also we have a um, question from Hrak Arabarian. Let's say we bring mathematics measure and PhD to AV. Where will the graduates work in Armenia? And I don't think so. They will leave Armenia. They will become diasporas just like you. The first step is give the VIAF a reason to stay, stay in Armenia. And, there will be the, uh, and then we should work on bringing diasporas back to Armenia, which I believe is harder. So this is kind of statement and the question. So. Yeah, this is why it's a long-term project. It's uh, something, it's, uh, the question is if you want or not, right? It, it, Hrang is completely, it's, it's right. If I, the way I see it is that the next few generations will also leave Armenia. But the way, but you could in, uh, put uh, contracts into this. Say, if, he can, if there is a connection, and I'm, by that I don't mean just, you know, people like me. I am interested in only in pure science. Uh, by that I mean, uh, by this connection, I mean the entire uh, people who work in industry, uh, people, the CEOs of these startups, and etc. All of these people are somehow connected with the Armenian education, and so that would create mechanisms for Armenian uh, students to go to the, uh, outside Armenia. That this is completely true. But one thing they can do, this is not completely bad if they go, yeah, because they can give money. Most well, for example, Harvard endowment, where does the money come from? It's the um, alumni who, who gives back. So it's not completely bad. And, and then few gen it, it will only happen a few generations later where these people will end up staying. But if you don't start, <laughs> first of all, it will never exist. And second of all, the good ones will leave anyway and they will not have a way of connecting. Yeah. So in other words, if you don't do anything, uh, nothing will change. If you do, Nothing will change in the, uh, the same system that people are living will probably happen in the next 10, 15 years. But my hope is that then it will stabilize because, uh, you know, the ones who left will contribute to the program. Will, some of them will come back like they're doing now. There are lots of people, for example, the founder of CRISP, he was from America. Uh, people like this will come back and use this talent. That, that, that's my hope. I think that's what will happen. Yeah. Herak has added that it's hard to come back, the diaspora will eventually disappear. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not going to disappear. The, yeah, <laughs> um, I don't know if Herak was uh, outside. Uh, I, am a, I don't know if he was outside. You know, in diaspora, there are people who are for, like one guy just sent me an email asking about how he can help Armenian education. And he was 
second or third generation Armenian. It's a, I mean, what diaspora has done, people don't value this, you know, the, the Armenians who escaped genocide, what, what they were able to do is something extremely extraordinary. No other nation was able to create so much structure to keep their national identity together. And it's not gonna just vanish tomorrow. Yeah, sorry. We have a question from Sharik Armenian that we have uh, mm -hmm. to raise. Uh, how can science communicate existing uncertainties and disputes clearly and still avoid the impression of arbitrariness for future development of countries like Armenia? And also, I would like to read the question of um, Anahit Ordian. She, she's asking, so what are the concrete five ways for Armenia diaspora cooperation, in your view? Five ways. <laughs> well, one, one thing that I, want, I wanted to say, uh, well, I don't uh, remember the first question, but I, the second question, I remember five ways, yeah? One I wanted to say is, actually, is uh, you know, we, we're kind of uh, individuals right now. You should think of diaspora as just a bunch of guys who love Armenia but don't know what to do. So one thing to do is for Armenia side to sit down, come up with a plan for us to do. Uh, for example, it would be, uh, here's a case in point. And Azerbaijan, for example, is now actively damaging Armenian image. I don't know if, what, if, you, if that comes to Armenia. For example, they, uh, in Poland, just January 20th, which is the anniversary of Baku programs, they, uh, in one of the major newspapers, they published an article in which they claimed that it was Armenians who actually organized that. So this is their running theme that Armenians organized all of these pogroms that began, that started the, uh, the first Karabakh war. And, you know, there's some individuals who get angry, like my friend here got really angry and he started writing e uh, emails to here and there. But individuals cannot fight th this sort of thing. Yeah. So one thing Armenian government can do is sit down and uh, create committees that could help individuals who are interested in doing things like that. Yeah. That they give them specific uh, projects like you go and do this, you go and do that. So that would be actually really good. And, and, and since I have the chance, let me also say this: that the the the, the um, uh, ambassador here in Poland was actually not concerned about this at all. <laughs> which to me was a shock. How can you not be concerned about, uh, about something like that? So, so that's one. I think there are committees that use us, use Armenians who represent, who, you know, members of the culture or scientific community and etc. as ambassadors for Armenia. That would be really helpful and in specific ways. Yeah, sorry, you want to say something? Uh, just Mimi Zaruhyan is... Uh... Uh, she is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the statement you have just said about the government should be more interested and motivated, yes. Uh, they're suggesting that it is interesting to note that some 30 years ago, it was founded by a handful of diaspora uh, visionaries. They took the in initiative. Why can't the same formula be applied to PhD programs? <laughs> waiting for an invitation. Why can specialists or academicians design a program and offer it to... Well, it's because you guys exist. I'm really sorry, but <laughs> the, you know, the, the free market works. There are rules in free market. Yes, there's competition. If, if I start my own PhD program, I'm going against you. <laughs> and you will not let me exist. <laughs> it... Uh, there's a lot of uh, difficulties here. I mean, there, there's limited resources. There are only, I don't know, a few, I don't know how many graduates, 2.5 million countries, so you can compute how many students there are. And to all of these universities, and my time, it was just YSU and the Polytechnic and Manka Warzakan. Uh, I don't remember if there was an agriculture university, but now there is this Russian university, the, the AUA, there are uh, a few others. So there's a big competition and how you find your way into this, um, into that market. I mean, you have to think of it as a, uh, it's a market, yes. It's different rules. It's not the Soviet Union when the government decides, oh, now there will be a PhD program. <laughs> it's, you have to find your way into this. So the best would be, the best would be if either AUA or the Russian University or 
YSU uh, finds a way of allowing this sort of sort of thing to happen. The, uh, so that's the best. The second best is that if people like if we find a way of uh, not being on the way of uh, any one of you guys <laughs> and still create some program like that. But it will be really difficult if it's if it's us doing it. Yeah, there is a success. There, there is a successful story in Russia. In Russia, they have an independent university, Moscow University, which is only concentrated on mathematics, and they have been producing some of the best mathematicians in the world. And uh, it began in 1990, I think, and still exists. It's one of the most elite programs in the world. So, we, if uh, as far as we don't have much time. Limited time. So, to sum up what we have discussed today, you are suggesting that um, we have to connect first of all Armenian diaspora with the uh, next generation. Yes, did I catch yeah, that? Right? Right. And we have to start from these little things to have some um, uh, groups, little groups of connection networks, make some uh, networks, and then. Uh, more concentrate on different programs between different diaspora groups, like in Russia and in the West, and try to also connect them together, have some maybe PhD program or several PhD programs, uh, which will make um, students, but first of all, change the mindsets, make people understand that they need PhD, not only for going to science, but also to uh, to use it in uh, yes. different industries, like mm -hmm. to Armenia to make Ar Armenia uh, develop more faster. And uh, also, you mentioned that diaspora should be represented in Armenia, in especially in government, to make people believe in their investments in uh, what they do for Armenia. Mm -hmm. Did I catch all the points correctly? Yes. So uh, you can add uh, your points and let's sum up the... Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's where the main, uh, main things that I wanted to convince people that uh, going for PhD in, in math, in sciences in general, is not a waste of time, that this should be valued. Of course, there are extremely difficult problems to solve in Armenia. I don't mean to say that this is, you know, the, like the army issue, for example, that's a huge problem for people, for guys who are uh, going to PhD and etc. So, the, so there are serious, extremely difficult problems to solve. But the, once you agree on ideas, then the problems become just problems. Then you think about how to solve them. Uh, so the, uh, the, 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 the I, I believe there is a giant potential outside. That, and the potential is on the shoulders of people who were actually born in Armenia. So these are not people who are second, third generation Armenians, but actually people who were born in Armenia, they left Armenia, and now they have uh, positions in uh, big name firms or good universities. And, and you need to utilize this. Uh, somehow connect them with the next generation, let them educate them, uh, and maybe it, they will also leave Armenia, but maybe a few, few cycles later it will stabilize and people will finally stay. Thank you very much for your statements and the reasons and uh, um, you have uh, brought. I hope one day we'll have um, everything you have mentioned and we'll be able to, to be more connected with our diaspora and um, both we will be useful for diaspora and Back diaspora will be useful for Armenia for developing our country. So, fine. Thanks, uh, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you.